This is a Dacia Duster, the super budget friendly family car, but should you actually spend your hard earned cash on one? Are they actually reliable? Well, if you watch one video today, make it this one because I'm gonna cover all the common problems, take you through everything that tends to go wrong so you can judge for yourself. Let's go. So let's kick off on the engine front then. So you could either get a 1.2 or a 1.6 petrol engine, but by far the most common was this, the 1.5 diesel. Now the best advice I can give you on this, it may sound a bit generic, but it's particularly relevant to this engine. And that advice is try and buy the newest one that you can, because these were continually revised throughout the life cycle of the Dacia, and the reliability increased with each revision. Some of the early engines had a few problems. So this was actually a Renault derived engine, the 1.5. You'll find it in Megane's, Scenic's, obviously the Dacia's, and also the Nissan Qashqai's as well. So it's quite a widely used engine. The early ones, as I say, could have a few problems. Turbos could blow for one, and when they would, sometimes they would take the entire engine with them. So if you are looking at an early 1.5, be on the lookout for those classic turbo failing symptoms. That's blown blue smoke whilst you're out on the road and also just a general lack of performance. On top of that, the injectors were quite common to fail, usually because the fuel pump was starting to break apart internally and it was feeding shrapnel through the entire fuel system. And finally, oil pumps could also fail and that lack of constant lubrication, yep, you guessed it, would lead to engine failure. So overall, just try and buy the newest one that you can get and stick around for when we get this out on the road and I'll give you a couple more tips on this engine. Next up, let's talk about that 1.2 and if the Dacia that you're looking at is pre-2016, be really careful with this engine. This was also a Renault derived engine and also caused a few problems. Even the press got involved with this one at certain points. Owners of both Qashqai's and these Dacia's pursued damages from the manufacturer because the engines were failing when the car was just a couple of years old. Really not good. So if you are looking at a slightly older duster, I would advise just avoid that 1.2 and go for either a later 1.5 like this or even the really quite robust 1.6. <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? <laughs> Good old Dacia. <laughs> oh yeah, if your headlights out, evidently you, you just give it a bit of a slap. <laughs> Next up, let's go on and talk about gearboxes. There's a few things you definitely need to know there. But before we do, a quick favor to ask from you guys. If you're getting value from this video, please do hit that like button. That's how other prospective buyers can find this video and get value from it too. And also, we create these buyer's guides for literally every type of car. So if you tend to buy second hand, hit that subscribe button and stick around as well. Okay, so on the gearboxes we go. So you're gonna get a five speed in the 1.6 petrol. You're gonna get a six speed in either the 1.2 or the 1.5. The latter being the little bit better of a gearbox as you would expect. Now, good news first, these tend to be pretty reliable, tend not to have too many problems at all couple things to be aware of that we can talk about in the test drive with regard to the clutch particularly on this diesel but gearbox wise they tend to be pretty solid now bad news is the same complaint seems to surface time and time again we hear this all the time and that is that the gearbox and drivetrain in general can be a little bit on the noisy side dacia have recognized this and their official response to it is yep we hear it however it's not indicative of a problem with the gearbox, it is just a little bit noisier. And quite honestly, we tend to agree. There's loads of dusters and other Dacias out there that have a little bit of whine coming from it, but we'll go on and do tens of thousand miles more. Now, having said that, make sure that it's not whining its head off. It shouldn't be really, really noisy, and those noises shouldn't be localized to one gear either. But we'll talk again a bit more in the test drive when we come to it. Now, the other option, was a DSG gearbox, the automatic style gearbox that you could get fitted to these. These were what we'd call here in Scotland, light hen's teeth. In other words, really, really rare. And that rareness makes it quite hard to give a general consensus on the reliability. 
because we just don't see that many of them. That having been said, there doesn't seem to be that many horror stories out there. So just be vigilant to make sure that you look at the general DSG type gremlins, any judder as you pull away from junctions, any hesitant gear changes, anything like that. Next up, let's talk about rust because unfortunately, this is what killed off many an early Dacia Duster. Now, to tell you why, we need to go right back to the beginning. These cars were originally assembled in India and when they were, pre-2014, they used very little rust protection. So much so that Dacia actually recalled certain cars and done a cavity wax treatment on them to try and stem some of the rusting. But even then, it was still really, really bad. So if you are buying a pre-2014 duster, that's one of the ones that likely will have been built in India and it won't have that much in the way of rust protection. So try and get a good look underneath it. Anything structural, the subframes, the cells, just have a good once over. Also on the bodywork, around the doors, around the boot, and also under the engine bay were areas that rust tended to congregate. Next up, let's talk about the cracking windscreens. And by that, I don't mean they were really good. I mean, they would physically crack. So it's not the stiffest chassis in the world. And any of these cars that were maybe used in a kind of off-road scene or even frequently going up and down curbs and stuff, the chassis would flex just enough that it could cause a crack to form in the windscreen. For whatever reason, it tended to be in this top left hand corner which is the passenger side here in the UK and bear in mind these cracks start really really small so have a good look around the edges to make sure it's not the case on the one you're buying. Next up something that isn't super common but it's well worth being aware of and that is in 2014 there was a bad batch of fuel gauges they tended to over read now it should have been fixed under warranty on those cars by now but worth being aware of when you go and look at one. Oh and also heater controls, let's talk about that. There was a really quite unusual problem wherein the heater would only work on setting four, which is absolutely deafening and just not practical. So make sure it works on one, two and three on that test drive. Final problem before we get this puppy out on the road for a test drive, and that is in the rear passenger footwells here. Have a look and make sure it's not damp. Get under the protective carpets, make sure the floor isn't damp. This isn't a huge problem. It tends to be the drains being blocked around these back doors. Drop a comment below if you want a how-to guide and you can go ahead and fix that yourself. But with the seller, bring it up, save yourself a bit of money, and then I'll help you fix it anyway. Right, let's hit the road. I think they borrowed the key from an 80s ladder. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've noticed a few issues. So cup holders, not the strongest point of the car. We can't really fit anything in. In order to get out of the car, you need to unlock it in the center every time. Everything's just not that intuitive. It's a little bit unusual, to be honest. Also, picture the scene. You're going along the motorway. You want to use cruise control. Is it handy on this stock here? No, is it maybe these buttons? No, no, it's there. There, in the center. It's a rocker switch. Yeah, and it's a rocker switch. Do you know how this works or? Yeah, so, well that's your speed limiter and then that's your, the other one's your cruise control. And it's, see the plus one? Plus? That, hang it, that. I um, thought that was from a radio volume. No, no, no. No, that, that what is R then? So see that, see that, where the phone hangs, that's where you turn the volume up and down. That's for the cruise control, you set your uh, speed. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not insulting it, I'm just, everything. No, weird. Are you recording, yeah? Yeah. Everything's just a wee bit unusual. Because it's like, these buttons are just not quite where I expect them to be. Mm. This is so much lighter than you expect it to be. Everything's just like, it's weird. Oh my God. Right, that's my least favorite thing so far. So I'm catching my shoe with a steering column as I turn the wheel. Does that happen to you? Your foot's on the clutch. It's catching. Right, anyway, let's go, we're blocking this junction. So here we are out on that test drive. I really hope the car that you've gone and seen is what you want it to be. There's nothing worse than viewing a car and it's not as described. But that's why we make these guides, so you can spot all the problems. So out on that road, 
especially if it's that 1.5 that you're test driving, make sure that the performance is there. We've got four people in this car and it definitely doesn't feel lethargic. It's quite a powerful, torquey feeling engine and if the one that you're driving doesn't feel that way, chances are there might be some DPF problems going on there. So make sure there's no lights and make sure that performance does feel quite strong. Now on top of that, try and find yourself a little area where you can really work that power steering because that was another area that could go wrong on these. In fact, it's gone wrong on this very car. And another side of the issue, obviously on top of having to fork out and fix problems, you don't want to be doing that, but another side of that problem is that getting parts can sometimes take a little while for cars like Dacia. They're not always an off-the-shelf part. All right, and as we come to the end of this test drive, not to alarm you or anything, but this next problem that seems to come up, well, there's no way around it, it's a little bit alarming, and that is a slightly sticky throttle pedal. I've seen this come up a couple times. Again, it's not a massive issue, it's easily resolved, but it's worth knowing about just in case it's happening on the one that you're looking to buy. Now, the final thing to mention is the Scooshies. That is the windscreen washers. The pump on them, was well known to die and when it would you would either get very little water coming out the washer jets or none at all problem is that's an mot failure here in the uk so it's going to need to get fixed and there you have it all the tips you need to go off and find yourself the perfect duster now don't click off of this video just yet hang around and see how it scores on our reliability leaderboard tally ho Whoa. <laughs> so how does the Thrifty Duster score on a reliability leaderboard then? Well here's the thing, it's going to depend massively on what one you choose to buy. If you get a 1.2 or an early 1.5, more than likely, you're gonna see some problems with that versus if you got a later 1.5 or even that 1.6, which are actually pretty well sorted, reliable cars. Now overall, we're gonna score this an average of seven out of 10, which is actually really quite respectable, especially when you consider the price point. Now, thank you so much for watching. Please do hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.